Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Marshall here, and I'm bringing you a COVID cast. That's right, so if I don't manage to fill the airwaves for the whole of the game, or if I feel a bit off my normal casting self, it is because over the weekend I received a COVID diagnosis and I'm starting to receive symptoms, which is lovely. Um, my energy has not been very high today, but I... Uh, I realise that you guys have gone without a cast or two in a long time. Also, I have started getting together a bunch of acoustic tiles and I'm building myself a makeshift enclave in my front room because I've seen a few comments about echo and reverb. So if this is any better, please let me know. It's not fully finished yet because I'm still missing a couple of stands. But if it's any better at the moment, please let me know, and at least then I know that I'm going in the right direction with it. Uh, and finally, if I get interrupted, apologies, the neighbor's cat is in my house. Here we go though, Nimzo back from a bit of a break and Corgi Army, both playing on Lugar. Nimzo in his customary orange, going bots first into air, one and then into three in terms of mechs and energy there. Keep that in mind if you're looking for your opening builds. Meanwhile, though, on the south, we've got, as I say, Corgi in yellow. It looks like the one, uh, one and three. Bots air, vehicles air. The three, then two, then three, then three. Meanwhile, on the north, we've got potentially three fabs coming out at once. What are we going to have just the two? Three. Now, something else that should be noted, this is not uh, a standard map being played. There goes the cat. Uh, this is not a typical ranked map. It hasn't been in ranked for hmm, probably about 10 seasons, to be honest with you. Uh, that's quite a long time for a map to be out of rotation. Maybe it'll go in the next one. Who knows? But... We've got a pelican dropping a fab all the way over to the other... S that's not a fab, that's a spark. That's a sparky spark. On the other side. Meanwhile... Oh, I missed it, but uh, Corgi brought in a beautiful boombot and killed off three fabs for Nimzo. All of his starting fabs from Corgi absolutely gone. Can Nimzo get revenge for that? Because that was disgusting. He might be able to here, actually. Going to drop down the spark, it does. Will he get the fabs? There's a few docks there, micro ink. Only gets one snipe rather than all three. I mean, that really is something to behold. And uh, I think this is one of Nimzo's earlier games from his return, so I wouldn't expect. Uh, huge levels of mm, D rust. To be attained at this particular juncture, but he's already showing the micro with the uh, the spark drops. So something else to mention for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while and PA for a while, we have a new bot, or rather a bot return in the T1 bots. We have the Stinger, the T1 anti-air bot. It is back. It's only a light anti-air though, it's not as uh, powerful as the spinner. It's basically trying to uh, emulate the, the Docs AA capability in terms of uh, damage output, but it is at least slightly more accurate. Right. Nibs of course trying to take the forward choke points here, Bomber comes in. Just a little bit of micro there. Nice one. Sorry, cat. No, not right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Corgi playing very, very aggressively up the middle, playing for the triple in the middle of uh, in the middle of these cracks here. Going to lock down across this area here. I wouldn't, shouldn't wonder. We really nice Nimzo going for the wider area, but also quite rewarding if you can get it locked down. No one playing for little enclaves like this, though. This triple here is usually one that players drop into, uh, and there's usually a naval factory, perhaps, 
to uh, to play for the water on the back side here as well. But so far, Nimzo staying in his quarter, in his hemisphere for for the time being. Spark coming out though, getting rid of the strikers at the cost of a spinner. Nimzo still trying to expand and therefore bringing the front line forward in doing so. And of course what he's also going to be doing is, as we see here, building factories on these front lines rather than point defence necessarily because uh, the factories are going to produce the units and use up the eco that you're, you're claiming and taking. Whereas point defence can be easily overrun and overwhelmed. So keep that in mind. If you're sort of silver or improving, as it were, in terms of ability, in your expansions, get up a factory instead of a turret spam. Much better investment of metal. Ugh. Another fab down for Nimzo. Back down to six now, seven. Replenishing his fabs as he loses them. It's another mark of a good player. And you'll also notice that Corgi's army is not in his base. That's for two reasons. One, because he's established forward lines here. But also... Also, also... Because uh, having armies out of your base means they're out doing stuff. So, for example, here they're occupying Nimzo's force. Here they're pushing in, ready to do a raid. Rather than just sitting back, accumulating, allowing Nimzo to expand, Corgi is actively taking a part in trying to win this game, apart from hoping he has a larger army count when he comes to push later. You know, with a good number of sparks from Corgi taking out that factory and not necessarily sticking around, he sees the commander coming in. He knows that there's a defensive force there. He's going to conserve his army. And now run away! Back he goes. Back to safety. Been a pain to Nimzo, harassing him there. And then legging it. Nimzo going up to T2 now. Corgi not yet there. That doesn't need it right now. Corgi has the larger army and the larger metal income. Trying to take a few choke points as well as this central six. The most valuable part of the map. And also, one of the easiest to defend. Nimzo there though, coming in with a few fabs. Grabbing the mechs. Corgi can easily go and raid it. But, metal pays itself off very quickly in terms of T1. T2 takes much longer. Which is why uh, higher level players tend not to opt for T2 metal. That and it's prohibitively expensive. It takes ages to build one. Oh, this is mean. Look at the coverage of that. Denying that expansion in its entirety. Gorgeous, Nimzo. And with the radar there as well, being able to see where Corgi's army is stationed. That's a very crucial enclave for Nimzo to have won there. But, Corgi now ready for the push of his own. Nimzo managed to knock down that centre, but Corgi here... Potentially damaging a few uh, power gens. Will he push it or will he just skirt around this iceberg? I think he might skirt around the iceberg. Round he goes into the base. This is a bit of a problem. Nimzo's naval can't really assist him from there. There's the range just coming in to Orca range there. <laughs> Overshooting Orcas. Not ideal. Bit of an air battle in the skies over Nimzo's base here. Losing four mechs, potentially two factories here as well. Commander comes in with a few uber cannons. Are we ready? Is he recharging? He's not, he's not firing the uber cannon yet. We've got a bunch of units stuck. Oh, gorgeous uber cannon there. Will he about save the factory? He will. The factory stands 3% HP. The Infernos run back away, and Nimzo claims the central six. Corgi has gone for the triple enclave to the west, and has finally unseated Nimzo's artillery installation on the other side of those icebergs there. That nasty glacial enclave. 
Nimzo though has the T2. Loses it. Don't want to be losing that advantage at this particular juncture. Corgi though with T2 Air out and about. Nimzo pushing in as well, seeing what damage he can do. Here he comes. He sees that T2 Air is a thing. He would not be doing any damage with that army there, but with the T2 ground, he could really do some damage now with two slammers and two gillies. That's a certainly uh, a good defensive force there. Corgi ready to push up the center though. This is one of the things that the central control allows you. It's not only the metal, but also the constant pressure of just threading right between these glaciers here. You've got to keep a constant defensive force here. Just ready and waiting. Here we're going to have to see the T2 in action there. The vehicle factory will go down, but the slammer's going to round the side of it. A couple may be lost here. Will Corgi micro and focus down the slammer's? Doesn't look like he will, and therefore will lose that entire army. Not a great trade there for Corgi. But he's got a larger army coming up the side there. Much heavier on Grenadiers now. They're firing over buildings. Gunships coming in though, and this is a problem. Nimzo cannot continue to push out here. He needs to focus much heavily, much more heavily on anti-air now. He's going to need some vehicle fabs, or uh, vehicle factories rather. Maybe get some spinners out of those. Here we go. Walls aren't going to do anything. You've got to chase those, those grenadiers there. comes the air to support the, uh, the gunships there taken down though you can see how Nimzo is responding to this he's desperately trying to get up Galata but here's the vehicle factory that'll be producing spinners to accompany his T2 force we shouldn't wonder oh maybe not oh yeah there we go I'll say Nimzo what are you doing <coughs> excuse me and we've also got Narwhals coming out of the naval now, ready for Nimzo to push down into the center. Oh! Corgi's commander in the naval enclave. What? That is a very strange place to have a commander. I mean, it's very secluded and therefore has a bit of a geographical defense. However... Corgi doesn't have any naval force at the moment, and his only way of dealing with anything that Nimzo could throw at him there is uh, is air, and Nimzo has some narwhals ready. Will Nimzo push out and see this? Does Nimzo even see that commander there? He doesn't. He's just pushing out with his navy anyway, because why not? His commander coming up to the front lines here. Where is he going? <laughs> not ideal. Very, very surprised move there from Nimzo's commander, but this T2 force here is big. That's big, and Corgi going for booms in a slammer-heavy force. There's no way those those booms are getting through, unless it's because he's seen the commander pushing out and he's hoping for a snipe. That'll be what the booms are for. He's hoping to off-seat the defense of that commander and then come round to a snipe. Nimzo, having got all of his fabs sniped at the beginning, Held off against Corgi's control of the center. Ooh, Nimzo is ready for those booms. He knows what Corgi's plan is, and he doesn't want any of it. In come the booms there, focusing on the vehicle side. Pushing through. Down goes a lot of the AA, but a lot still remains. And the commander is there as well with some very potent anti-air. And we've got worms ready for a, an attempted snipe here. Two worms and a bunch of booms. Three worms. This is Corgi's all in. What's Nimzo doing in the water over there? Let's have a gander. Corgi's comm needs to be tracked in uh, that picture in picture. Except for some reason, that's. Uh, I don't know, maybe my um, hotkeys have changed since I popped in hot build. But anyway, here they come. Worms on the commander. Run away, run away, Nimzo. You don't want to be around these guys. Worm shot one, worm shot two. The commander in great jeopardy here. Will he survive? 
getting him out of those front lines very, very quickly. Here come the booms, ready to finish it off. Can they finish it off? It's going to be very, very close. I don't think they will. No! Corgi whiffed his chances. He could potentially have better microed those worms rather than letting them overfly the commander. One more worm shot and that commander would have been toast. Absolutely toast. More booms ready though. It's unrelenting scuttlebugs. Well, what's going on with Corgi's comm in the water there? Nimzo's naval still being necessary to defend the coastline here because Corgi just keeps pushing in and around that whole side. And Nimzo's commander now safe and secure in his base. Is he safe though? That's the question. I don't know. Corgi's worm attempts have failed. Could potentially get <coughs> enough Kestrels. To just go a slam dunk on that commander. Maybe a one pass with a whole bunch of bombers. And that would be possible. Lure Nimzo's army out of the base. Build enough to overwhelm one or two Galata. And Bob's your uncle. But I think in Corgi's case. Richard is his uncle. And Richard is not the one who knows how to bomb a snipe. I, mean, I do apologise if you are called Richard, but I, I do recommend learning how to uh, bomb a snipe. Very successful strategy if executed properly. Just saying. That is a lot of booms. That is a significant amount of booms. 91 booms going through the boom nest of Boomton. Booms and the mines. Oof, oof, oof! <laughs> uh, how many have we got left? A third. Well, that stifled Corgi's push. Nimzo's commander getting straight into the water, though. He does not want to be around the boom bots when they're in his base. And he wants to hide in the water, in and around his anti-air ships there. Corgi's commander pushing up the... What is going on? Why is Corgi's comm here? This makes absolutely zero sense. <laughs> I don't understand. Nimzo's base is now consolidated. He's got the six mechs over there. Corgi has managed to unseat the side and still Corgi remains with the larger eco, but both players struggling Corgi continuing to go for booms, whereas he'd be better suited going something more specialised. But it looks like we might even have just a a, a naval showdown in this uh, in this canal here. There's no way. How does Nimzo know this is a thing? Getting T2 naval up, is, is Corgi just being a nutter here? Oh! 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 And it's a snipe! It's a surprise! Surprise <laughs> naval cheese! Well then... For those of you sceptical of showering, this is why you don't have head and shoulders. Because you can get shot by orcas above water level. <laughs> yeah, you want to be completely submerged to avoid that sort of nonsense, but... Nimzo's commander there, completely caught unawares. He didn't have naval, uh, a radar coverage whatsoever. Let's go back and have a look at that. He can't have been aware of that. No, completely unaware. Oh, well, he knew that there was some naval there, look, and that it was pushing. Hence, 
the uh, the move to the defense, but it was just too little too late. And right at the end there, with their pushes elsewhere, Nimzo didn't quite ever manage to get into Corgi's base, unfortunately. And then as I say, Corgi with the surprise cheese. Shows up on the horizon. Stamps. Tension rising. And he appears. Out of the fog of war. With the orcas. Claiming the kill. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this game. I hope you've enjoyed this cast. Apologies if it is not up to my usual snuff because, uh, well, I am snuffled up with COVID. I will try and use the time if I am feeling well enough uh, while I'm uh, home and not working to get some more casts ready for you. So expect, hopefully, a few in the, uh, in the coming days or weeks. Depending on how many I get through will dictate how often I upload them. But of course, if you do have some... Uh, reasonably high level equal skilled games please send the replay ids to me from uh, superstats and i will endeavor to have a look at them even if i don't get around to it but anyway i've been marshall folks thank you very much for watching thank you for supporting me drop a like if you liked and a comment they really help me out until next time have a good one